All right, so on this show, we talk a lot about bringing in new voices. Uh, we've walked the walk with just about every group but one, and that would be college students. Now, I'm excited about this. We're going to rectify that in spades. Um, I, gotta, I had so many people here, I can get in the shot really <laughs> easily. We got Brendan Flaherty. We have uh, Philip Dragon, Olivia Teixeira. Is that right? Did I say that right? Texera. OK. <laughs> uh, Texera and uh, Kevin Chrism? Yes. Also, it's, it's Dragoni. Oh, oh, right. oh. <laughs> <laughs> you got mine right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, guys. You got mine right. It'll get better. It's, it's On email, I thought I had it down. Right. Um, my first question is, and then you can take it, you know, how did you get involved? You came to college, you could do anything you wanted. Like, how did you get involved? Since I butchered your name, I'll start with you, Olivia. How did you get involved in politics? Yeah, so I first got involved in politics. I actually interned for Congressman Kennedy in high school, um, and that was the so first. Kennedy the, the third? Yes, and that was the first political thing I did. And then I took over the St. Anselm College Dems when I was a freshman, and eventually, as a sophomore, took over the New Hampshire College Dems. Eventually, left that position, but that's how I initially got we involved. We did. What are we? You're, you're a D. Uh, we're proud of it. We're equally undeclared. <laughs> undeclared. Yeah. D. Proud Republican. Yes, there we go. We got some diversity on here. Anyone else want to, like, did you come wanting to be an English major or you always were jazzed up about politics? I came to St. A's for politics, St. Anselm College. Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, I was, I was considering Catholic U and then I heard about the, uh, the Institute of Politics at St. A's. It's right in my backyard. I'm from Nashua. So uh, it was great to just kind of go up there and be able to take advantage Funny, of it. Funny, like Brendan, I also consider Catholic University and then just I to be there, down in D.C., right? Down in D.C., yeah. right there. And then stepping on foot of the uh, New Hampshire Institute of Politics, led by some great people down there, it's just, it's something. Something new every day. You can walk by going to class, and there's Cory Booker or a new candidate. And it's really a great you know, crown jewel of New Hampshire. Yeah, you it's, see a, it's a hidden gem. You and see it's the great. pictures on the walls. I was oh, there the amazing. other day talking to Tom Steyer. It's amazing. When did you guys get out of the mold? When I was your age, I just knew what I knew from my parents. And then I turned around and acted smart because I just said what they told me. Like, how have you developed your own views and separated from what you learned at home? Well, I think it's just, it's, it, we're in the age of social media. We're in the age where as young as 12, 13, maybe even earlier years old, you can have access to just about anybody's political views. I mean, obviously the, the president right now makes a lot, of, a lot of bold statements online, getting a lot of people into uh, politics over social media. I mean, that's, that's definitely how I formulated a lot of my views was through social media politics. Yeah, um, I think in terms of social media for me, uh, a lot of the time you, can, you find yourself getting wrapped up in your own bubble, um, your own sound echo chamber there. Um, so, I mean, being able to kind of pay attention to that, but also break free. Do from you guys have real construct? Because my biggest thing about what adults is I don't go to a party and I say something to somebody and they're like, that's a really good idea. I think I'm going to change my mind a little bit. No one in my cohort ever <laughs> changes their mind about anything. Do you have real conversations that lead to that kind of discussion. I mean, on the ride the down. Whole car ride yeah, down. down. <laughs> the whole car ride down. Like an hour and a half. And, we did on the car ride down. Yeah, 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 and definitely. And the Institute of Politics is completely nonpartisan. So that's right. our that's our way of interacting with the other side of the aisle in a constructive way and just exposing ourselves to that kind of conversation. You know, I had I went to a, a liberal arts college, a little bit bigger, but than St. A's, but still small. Mm -hmm. A lot of my friends who were Republicans were very uncomfortable on campus sure. because it just was a bit of a PC generation in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. Do you feel comfortable being able to speak your mind the way the culture at St. A's or college in general is? Absolutely. I have no problem speaking my mind. And I'm actually with Brandon, one of the leading members of the college Republicans here on campus. I lead our recruiting effort. Uh, and I, don't, I feel comfortable. And I have many friends who are Republicans and many friends who are Democrats. And we can speak. and perfectly and there's, there's, there's no problem. Yes, we are in a PC generation. We are in a bit of a different time, but I feel perfectly fine speaking my views and being proud of it. I don't think it's a it. PC generation because it was, this, it was like that when I was there and that was more yeah. than a generation ago. But let, you talk about the general population though. Is, right. is it cynical on campus outside of your bubble or is, are people engaged as well? I, I mean, if you go to school in New Hampshire, you kind of have to be. I, it's the engagement on campus is so much higher than I think a regular college is. Even students outside of the IOP. Definitely, yeah. Um, at the Institute of Politics, we have many majors, not just politics majors, um, and it just shows how many people want to get involved, regardless of if they're super passionate or not. So without. We're not asking you to, to say who you support. I'm just interested <laughs> in terms of who's come on campus. Not only like who have you liked the most, but who has generated the most energy? 
Well, if it's a question of, of uh, who's interested in me most, I'm going to have to say uh, Tulsi Gabbard. She was at a Politics and Eggs the other day. Yes, yeah, last um, week, right? Yeah, yeah, she was there last week. I found her to be very articulate. I don't know if I agree with her on many of the issues, but she's definitely got the, you know, she's got integrity and uh, she's got the, uh, the military experience. It's funny, I thought she'd be more dynamic a speaker, right? I mean, mm -hmm. she's solid on policy, she's super confident, she, and you sh we showed her workout the other day. Oh, I mean, yeah. She could, <laughs> she, I would not mess with her, no. but I, I, I find her and Mayor Pete sometimes, it's just they're, too, they're so serious all the time. I don't know. What about yeah, you? It, it's certainly, uh, it, it's, uh, there's been a lot of impressive speakers on our camp. I mean, we've already, I think probably every single one of them has already rolled through St. A's. Uh, I, you know, a few of us attended the CNN town hall that was hosted uh, for five candidates back in April and I was very impressed with with just about everything that was laid out and, and, and you're certainly right that certain candidates do have a hard time getting that kind of uh, charismatic vibe the, the something maybe it seems robotic or undynamic um, and that's uh, that's also a thing with with the focus on national media and politics you know you're yeah. always you always have to be on the ball you have to be engaging you have to be able to go past just the 30 second sound button. And if you're not, somebody will catch it and they'll post it and then, yeah. I mean, it's just to see how you like Booker, but I want to go down the line on this one. Who, who's really captivated your attention? Yeah, so it, just being in New Hampshire and getting to see all the candidates outside of the media um, is just an amazing experience and I personally, um, getting to see most of the candidates, I was very impressed with Senator Booker and also Secretary Castro. I think they're both very dynamic speakers that don't get as much Isn't Booker coming back uh, next yeah. week? Next week. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's Tuesday. intelligent. How about you? Because sure. your lens is interesting too, since you know these are candidates you're probably not going to support. Sure, but even if I'm not going to support them, it's still great to go see them. Yeah, so who, have to who say. have you really So enjoyed? I'm with Brendan. I was at the Politics and Eggs, and I got to see Congresswoman Gabbard from Hawaii speak. And I thought she was a very dynamic speaker, and I, I give her a lot of credit. I give her hats off for coming to speak. I think she told a great story about uh, her time in serving in the Iraq war and I think I appreciate especially her message on ending the endless wars you've heard a lot about that yeah. um, her sort of her main campaign theme and so I, I was captivated she didn't speak no teleprompter I don't even think she had a speech I think she, I think she it was really just off the cuff and I, I noticed a lot of people in attendance at that event were very pleased what she had to say and yeah. and she may not be the nominee heck she probably won't be the nominee but I thought I, she was very impressive. And she has pockets of real support in, oh, sure. in some, some interesting places. Okay, I'm not doing last names again. <laughs> no, I'm no, just no. going to say Brendan, Philip, Olivia, and Kevin. Now, what we want to tell you guys what's going to happen uh, is all four of these guys, well, three guys and, and one woman, excuse <laughs> me, uh, they're going to be in New Hampshire, and when they can, outside of their studies, hopefully they're going to help us out with some content. If we can't get to an event, hopefully do some reporting for the show. So we really appreciate the insight, and we look forward to seeing you. Look forward to it. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, it's really good.